Alrighty. Well, it's a cold, rainy winter's day. We're in lockdown and I thought, what better to do? We could come in here and do some home cinema stuff. So I think I'm going to plod along with my home cinema ceiling. Um, you'd think that I've done enough on this, but you know, I've done a whole lot, but I still need to do a bunch more. And today the whole idea is to get inside there and actually um, put some insulation in. It's going to be a massive job because basically that means I have to pull every sheet of this magnetic stuff off, which isn't a big deal because it's magnetic, right? But um, still, just thinking about it sucks. Um, so I've got to pull that down. And I also have to take every stick of this um, fairing channel off as well. Um, you can see inside I've got some, you know, pine battens that I've already stuck in there. Now this one looks like it's been screwed to either side, but on most of them I haven't bothered yet. So I have to screw them in, stick some insulation in, and then um, we got to put some carpet underlay underneath and staple it in to hold it in. This stuff here I cut uh, a little while ago using my industrial fabric cutter that I use to cut my fabrics with when I'm making corsetry and the likes. And um, just glided through this stuff like butter. It was fantastic. So hopefully I've got enough of this stuff. I'm pretty sure I do. If not, I do have a lot more carpet underlay that we can call on. But you can see behind the screen or where the screen's going to go, I already have that very first joist done. That has been, you know, there's a whole heap of, I think it's 175 mil rock wool, no, no, no earth wool, um, insulation up there. The next joist I haven't done, it's pretty difficult to get in there, but I'll get something in there shortly. And above the soffit, I've done that because otherwise I couldn't do the soffit. So the rest of this needs to be done. It's going to take a while. Hopefully I can do it within the next couple of days. I'm thinking half one day, half the other. But um, yeah, I'm pretty happy. I've got all of these sheets perfect now. Every single edge is meeting up perfectly. And um, I've even got all of this um, end, end seams meeting perfectly as well. So it can't get much better than that. I just got to get some velvet on here and that's being a pain you know I used to use this stuff that I wanted to put on the bottom of this these panels I used that stuff for 25 years and now that I need a good 30 meter bolt my supplier no longer sells it so that sucks so I'm trying to find something else because I really want to cover this because when I'm watching movies in here at night time it's like having a mirror ceiling it's so reflective but anyway I'm going to plot on I'll start off slowly as per normal and we'll start doing a time lapse and get this thing done.
All right, there you go. I've uh, removed all the sheets of polycarbonate sheeting from this side of the ceiling and just pushed them across here. It's the coolest things. These um, these framing pines that just hold this stuff up, <laughs> they're, they're really serving a purpose. I spent like a hundred bucks on that and I was spewing that. All I was, you know, buying it for was to, to do this, but oh, I'm so happy I did. It's just been the best idea. But um, yeah, I was also going to take this steel furring channel down, but I forgot they're actually holding up these um, sticks of pine batten that I'm yet to screw against the joists on a lot of these empty channels. So I'm going to screw this pine batten off first, and then I'll remove this steel um, furring channels. But you may have noticed that I was using a drill. I was drilling holes through this stuff. You can see a couple of holes there and you can see a lot of sawdust on the other side of the sheet. That's from the joist. Uh, well, what I was doing there, you can see there's a couple of dots there. Well, that's where my safety lines are gonna go. Um, I'm actually gonna install safety lines on this pretty soon. I'm not sure when, it'll be in another video, not in this, not a, yeah, not in this um, episode. But um, we'll be doing that pretty soon. Then I don't need to keep these, you know, bluish green um, framing pine pieces up there. So that's it. I'm going to get back into this. I'll be back soon. <laughs>
There we go, we've got a bunch of <laughs> short daggy bits. I'll show you what I'm gonna be using those for. If we have a look up here, they're for all in between these um, furring channel clips and over the soffit. They just require shorter parts, shorter bits of pine battens. The cool part is all of these pine battens that you see on the ceiling, I, I, can't, I did buy them originally, but I was gonna throw them out oh, a couple of years ago, I'd say, or a year ago at least, but I decided to hold on to them because I thought I might be able to reuse them. So it's great, we're recycling. All of this stuff was, you know, it was all shelving around here in, my, in the cinema before it was going to be a cinema. So it's great to reuse some stuff. All right, well, let's get the, the rest of these short pieces on the ceiling and then we will start insulating. All right, here we go again. Hopefully taking this furring channel off for the very last time. Sick of doing this. Right, so I've got all this, well this half of the room, the furring channels have gone, finally. Now, for people who are curious, why the hell am I doing it in this order? Why am I taking these off again? And why did I have to test fit my ceiling? Well, this is the reason why. Because you see, once this pine batten is screwed onto this joist, I can't get access to this furring channel clip. So I had to make sure my ceiling was perfectly level first. So I could lock it in by putting this um, pine batten there so I can um, get my insulation in and, you know, connect the carpet underlay or the plasterboard, whatever I choose to go with. I can tell you now, <laughs> it'll be the uh, carpet underlay, but I can go with plasterboard down the line if I want to. But uh, yeah, that's the reason I just wanted to Kind of explain that now that you've seen that you might understand all right so i'm going to get into it i'm going to start cutting some of this stuff down here stick it in see if we can get a couple of these done by the end of the day it's my birthday today so i'm going to mum and dad's for a feast so let's see how much i can get done now all right so i've decided to actually cut this stuff outside now rather than inside.
Well, there we go. All done. We have our um, insulation in our ceiling joists, between our ceiling joists. That didn't take long at all. That was like 30 to 45 minutes. Um, all the gaps have been plugged. Looking really nice, really good. Um, so we have our pine battens. You can see the green pine battens up there. I've recycled those, so that's excellent. Um, now they're holding the, the insulation in, but they're also going to be what we staple our carpet underlay to, to hold everything in place. And in the future, if I decide I want to put plasterboard up there, I'll be able to screw the plasterboard into that as well and have the carpet underlay kind of 
um, working as a bit of an absorber, a vibration absorber or something, but I'm not going to do that. There's no way I'm going to be doing that. But it's nice to know that if I want to, I can. So uh, the other thing is, look what I found. I didn't find it, sorry, I bought this. I actually bought something. Look at this, I bought a um, an air stapler. I wanted one of these, wanted one of these for like years and years. I finally got one because when I did uh, this joist up here, you can see I've already done this one up there. Man, my hand was sore you know, after I did this one, uh, just using one of those manual staplers. So I went out, bought it, and it's awesome. I'm actually using it with an air compressor that I found at the dump. We have our hose down here, so we'll just plug that stapler into this hose, and this will make really light work of it. So that's great. So hopefully by the end of today, we've got a few more hours to go. I'll have all the carpet underlay up on this half, and then tomorrow I'll start onto this half. And then by the end of the week, hopefully, I'm hoping this entire ceiling will be done. And I don't have to worry about it for a while. I'll go and do some other things. I want to start my riser. Uh, I do, however, want to put some black velvet on these um, ceiling twin wall sheets up here, because to be honest, it's annoying watching movies. It's so bright because everything just, you, the glare that you get off, it's like having a mirror on the ceiling. But um, that's okay, I didn't pay for it. And <laughs> it's the best stuff, like I keep saying, for Starfield ceilings ever. But um, let's get into it and finish this off.
All right, what do you think? There you go. I love it. I think it looks awesome. It looks super cool. Um, I know, I know we're never going to see this stuff. There's going to be a Starfield ceiling directly underneath it. That's all you'll see. But um, just knowing it's up there for myself, it's probably it's pretty cool. I just like it. I think it looks really good. All these different colours of underlays and so forth. Really digging it. Let me just stand back here and get a, a wider shot. Yeah, you know, the funny thing is I've been kind of studying home cinema design and so forth. I've been on AVS for 21 years, really religiously, you know, reading people's what they do and so forth. So I feel like I do know what I'm talking about, do know what I'm doing. There's nothing people can really tell me that I haven't read a thousand times before. And one of the things that I have read is, you know, people doing a similar thing like this and they put their insulation in between their joists. And the amount of people that say, well, why do we even need to put the, um, isn't putting plasterboard up there just going to, you know, make the insulation kind of irrelevant? And a lot of people agree with them, and there's a lot of people that don't agree, and there's a lot of people that say, well, why don't you do it? We'd all like to know, seriously. Well, I've done it now. This is probably the first time I've seen anyone do it. Um, but I've never heard of anyone wanting, no one's ever thought of this carpet underlay trick. Um, this is my little kind of contribution, I guess. But um, we'll see how we go. Like I keep saying, if it really needs it, I can always put the plasterboard up there as well. Those pine battens are still up there. I can basically screw them directly to the, you know, underneath this carpet underlay, which will actually help it as well. So, yeah, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting ex um, thing to experience. Now, what I'm going to do now is um, do this side. So first of all, I'm going to actually move this fairing channel. So I'm going to clip them back into place. And then I'm going to get stuck into this side. Uh, I'm not going to put these sheets back on these fairing channels on this side because I want to do a few other things like safety lines, etc. But um, yeah, what I want to do is I've just made a decision that once I've actually you know, done this side, put the fairing channels back up, I'm actually going to um, pull all of this the ceiling down I think and take a video of what it looks like all together all done in carpet underlay because I think it would look pretty cool pretty cool but uh, there we go I'm just going to stop talking now get back into it we'll do a you know a time lapse of me just kind of finishing this side off and end this video
Hey, there you go. Check that out. How cool does it look? Oh, it looks awesome. I love it. You like this bit of purple, this roll of purple that I threw in last moment? I cut that especially. I thought, oh yeah, we'll throw a bit of purple in there. <laughs> Not that you're going to ever see it. But um, yeah, it's cool. It actually does change the sound in here a little bit. Um, you can't, I, I was watching a movie last night. It wasn't dramatic. You can definitely hear um, when you're clapping your hands. It's definitely no, it does absorb the sound, which is a good thing. Whereas when you put your hard twin wall sheets up the top there, it would be just like a hard plasterboard ceiling, I guess. Um, it does, you know, reflect quite a bit. So it's gonna be good once I've got the, um, the Starfield ceiling up and that is covered in thick velvet. It's going to be really cool but um guys i'm pretty happy let me just stand up here on in the shop and I'll show you uh, it's going to be a shame like i keep saying just to kind of cover it up i kind of dig it i do dig it but um yeah the end result will look, look amazing but anyway um i'm not sure if i'm going to keep i'm not sure i'd never know how i'm going to do my videos until i'm editing them uh, for now, I'm actually going to extend the fairing channels back across here, put it back the way it was. Um, I'm going to film it anyway, whether I put that in the video or not, I'm not sure. But if I don't, I'd like to say thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Please like, comment, subscribe. <laughs> All right, see you later.